A couple of months ago, I posted an interview with Dr. Tanya Dempsey discussing how and why female long haulers find their symptoms get worse at certain points of their monthly cycle. After a discussion on the topic with Dr. Vicky Mail from Imperial, I decided to collect some data on it because it turns out that if we know at which point in the cycle the symptoms get worse, it could tell us quite a lot about the potential autoimmunity that might be at the root of long COVID symptoms. So hang around and let's go through it. So before I go into the data, it's worth covering some of the biology that makes the data relevant. Let's hear from lecturer in reproductive immunology at Imperial College London, Dr. Vicky Mayle. So we can think of the immune system as roughly speaking falling into two kind of types of response. There's a type one response, which is more to do um, with immune cells responding, and a type two response, which is more to do with antibodies responding. And in pregnancy, the immune system, it doesn't get weaker. A lot of people think that, but that's not the case, but it does change. And it changes from a more type one cellular response to a more type two antibody response. And this means that certain autoimmune diseases will get worse in pregnancy, the ones that are mediated by antibodies. So for example, um, lupus or myasthenia gravis or Graves, they will get worse. But for example, MS, which is a type one mediated, uh, cellular mediated disease and rheumatoid arthritis, they both get better in pregnancy. So the immune system changes in pregnancy and it's not actually really known if this is something that's useful for pregnancy or if it's something that's happening because of something else. Now kind of going into the menstrual cycle, um, we kind of, we can think of the second half of the menstrual cycle, which is what we call the secretory phase after ovulation, as being a lot like pregnancy, the body's preparing for pregnancy so that if there's a fertilized egg, it's, it's ready to be pregnant. And the immune system at that time is quite similar in some ways to how it is in pregnancy. So all those diseases that tend to get worse in pregnancy tend to get worse in the second half of the menstrual cycle. And all those diseases that get better in pregnancy tend to get better in the second half of the menstrual cycle. And the opposite. So the diseases that are worse in the second half are better in the first half, but worse in the first half are better in the second half. So this is how this is how it's changing for, for things like MS, rheumatoid arthritis, um, lupus, those kinds of diseases. So where does this leave us with long COVID and why it should change over the menstrual cycle? Now, I'm not at all a long COVID expert, so I leave that to you and Danny. Um, but one of the ideas about long COVID is that it might be an autoimmune problem. And so if it is an autoimmune problem, we could absolutely see that it would change over the menstrual cycle and pregnancy in exactly the same way as these other autoimmune diseases that I've just spoken to you about. What would be really interesting is if it changed, you know, if it was like MS, we would say, oh, that's, you know, this particular kind of disease. And if it was like, say, lupus, we'd say, oh, it's this particular kind of disease. Reading your, um, you know, the description in your, in your chapter of what patients are noticing, it seems to be one thing for some people and one thing for other people. So unfortunately, it's not super clear. So, so you have just given me a great idea. I could get an N of I would expect 400 plus within a day or two and out of that actually get some sense of where the, where most people yeah. are finding which symptoms changing, which would then give us a huge clue about the kind of autoimmunity we're looking at, right? Yeah, I mean, potentially, yes. Pretty interesting, huh? So what does the data actually say? Well, we had a sample size of 605. The majority were of a reproductive age or at least pre-menopause. It's a bit of a generalization perhaps, but I've assumed that those in the 55 plus age groups were no longer experiencing a monthly cycle. Almost half of this group have been suffering for over two years and three quarters of them for over a year. Which are the most common symptoms they experience as part of their long COVID generally? Fatigue and PEM is number one then dysautonomic symptoms, then cognitive dysfunction, muscle and joint aches, pains and weakness, neurological symptoms, headaches, and then respiratory a surprising way down the list. How severe is this cohort's long COVID baseline? Well, generally between a five and an eight out of 10 with a modal average of seven. That's pretty debilitating really when you think about it. How many of this total group have found their cycle itself has changed in frequency or duration since suffering from long COVID? 
Well, it's over half, with the vast majority of that group becoming more irregular and a smaller proportion becoming more regular. And if you remove the over 55s from the equation, then as we'd expect, this weights slightly more towards the more irregular side, with that group coming in at 49% versus 46% for those who didn't notice a difference. Now, here's the big one. Do symptoms vary over the menstrual cycle? Over 70% say yes they do, and if we remove the over 55s, this goes up to 76%. When do the symptoms change? Well, by far and away the most common time for them to change is in the run-up to and during women's periods. The next most common is the second half of the cycle, which is the time just preceding this. And least common is in the week after the period has finished. And what happens to those symptoms? Unsurprisingly, 94% say they became slightly or much worse. The modal average goes up to 8 out of 10 severity here, but you can see that the whole chart has shifted significantly to the right. So which symptoms tended to get worse? Well, number one, fatigue and PEM. Number two, headaches. Number three, dysautonomic symptoms, but all symptoms pretty well represented here. So it really is a smorgasbord of dreadful. And how about those women who'd become pregnant during long COVID? Well, it's a very small sample, but broadly speaking, half felt better and half felt worse. So when you compare it to that 90-something percent of those who felt worse uh, at the certain times of their cycle, it does seem to be a different presentation to that of the monthly symptom slam. So what are we to make of this data? Well, time for me to defer to Vicky. This is what her interpretation was. From what you have, I would say this looks more like a cellular immune mediated autoimmune disease, such as MS. If this is true, and if long COVID is an autoimmune condition, we would therefore predict that people would feel better during pregnancy as they do for MS. This could also be in line with symptoms occurring more at times when the cellular immune response is more actively trying to control uncleared virus. Finally, it's worth saying that a formal investigation of this would need to find a way to separate out long COVID specific malaise from the more general malaise that we know affects a lot of people at this time in the cycle. Now, clearly my data is just the results from an online survey, and as such is subject to all kinds of biases, whether demographic, selection-based, or from subjective self-reporting. So larger clinical studies on the subjects are very much required. There has been some interest from Imperial on the subject, so I'm very much hoping they can get something off the ground, prompted by these rather interesting results. Next up, I'm going to be addressing the slightly uh, connected subject of fertility, uh, both looking at it from a male and female side from those who've been suffering from long COVID. Is there an impact? What evidence is there for it? And what just do we think might be the situation there? So look after yourselves. Until next time. <laughs>